Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Shamba Shape Up has been to many parts of the region. Kenya. Uganda. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Zambia. Welcome to Munda Makeover. Keeping livestock for milk, meat, eggs, and so on can be a very profitable business. But you need to plan carefully and follow recommended guidelines in order to make good money. In today's episode, we shall see some of these recommendations to follow in order to make your business successful. First and most important is feed. The excess rain that we got brought an abundance of fodder for our cows, meaning healthy cows that produce milk very well. But because of the unpredictable climate that we have been experiencing, a wise farmer should also think about preserving this fodder to use in the dry season. As you know, in the dry season, milk prices will go up and when you have made silage and hay to keep feeding your cows with, you'll keep getting a steady supply of milk, meaning you can expect good returns. In past episodes, we have seen the ways in which you can preserve your fodder by making silage. Let's look at another way you can preserve this fodder by making hay. For this, let's go to Machakos County to visit a dairy cow farmer, Elizabeth. Keeping dairy cows can be a challenge. Sadly, Elizabeth had to sell her dairy cows because she did not have enough feed for them. She has since planted boma roads for her two bulls, but she's worried the fodder wouldn't be enough for her to keep dairy cows again. We have invited Jessica Gai from the International Livestock Research Institute, Ilri, to come and teach Elizabeth how to make hay so she can have her dairy cows again. Elizabeth, now you are telling me before that you had many cows. What happened to them? And because of the challenges of the, of the rains, I decided to sell them because I had no enough pasture for them. And I bought another two small ones so that I can manage them. That's a very common challenge to many farmers mm -hmm. because we find that many farmers will have a lot of fodder when uh, it is raining mm -hmm. and then they will have no fodder when it's dry. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I can advise the farmers, they try to store as much fodder when there is plenty so that they can use it later. Uh -huh. How can the farmers do that? Mm -hmm. You can either do silage mm -hmm. or you can make hay. And what determines which method you're going to use is the type of fodder that you have. Uh -huh. So yes. today, yes. we won't talk about hay. Yes. Elizabeth, yes. have you ever made hay? No. First of all, why yes. should farmers make hay? We want to have enough fodder mm -hmm. throughout the year so that there is no time when you have uh, a lot of fodder that some of, of it is even going to waste. Mm -hmm. And the other time again, now you don't have any fodder. Now you have to sell your cows, as you said. Mm -hmm. And two, we also want to harvest that fodder at the right stage. Because beyond a certain stage, that fodder will start uh, losing its value. Because as a plant grows mm -hmm. older and older, it has a lot of fiber mm -hmm. and therefore reducing digestibility. At the mm -hmm. same time, the nutrients will go down. Mm -hmm. Again, when you harvest, when you cut that grass, you are also going to encourage it to sprout. So it will mm -hmm. quickly come up again and you'll have a lot of uh, fodder within a short time. Can I use any grass to make the hay? Hay should be made by the thin stemmed grass. Mm. Because even napier is grass, 
but if you look at its stem, it's too thick for it to dry uh, enough for hay making. Mm -hmm. So some of those grasses we recommend them for silage making. Uh, but also in this farm you have traditional grass. Mm -hmm. Most of these traditional grasses are not very good in quality. Okay. I would recommend that you use uh, grass that is uh, specifically improved for fodder, yeah. for example, bomaro. Uh -huh. yes. Elizabeth and other farmers who have never made hay, yes. step by step okay. on how to make a good bale of hay. Hay making is, is, is simple, it's not complicated. So it involves three steps, harvesting, curing, and the baling itself, or making the bales. Remember to harvest your grass when half of your grass in the field has flowered. This is how the flower looks like. At this stage, the grass has more nutrients that is useful to the cow. You can mix your grass and legumes to make better quality hay. Hay should be made when the weather is sunny, when there are no rains. Okay. So you cut your hay or you harvest your hay, Please remember, do not heap it. Mm -hmm. you, you, spread it, it. you spread it. And this is because the drying process is more uh, helped by the air circulation. And also at the same time, you want to maximize the, the sun for it to, to dry, to lose enough moisture. Okay. So let your grass dry for two to three days. So within now those two days, mm -hmm. preferably after three hours, you can come and turn and that it. grass again. And then now, after that, you'll be able to, to, to see that your grass now, when you hold it like that, you can see it's not breaking apart, mm -hmm. but again, it's not too wet. Okay. So it's, mm -hmm. it's what we would call wilting. It has uh -huh. wilted. Make a box. Using materials available, measure 75 centimeters by 50 centimeters by 40 centimeters. Once ready, put two strings, and then start by putting grass, layer by layer as you compact, until the box is filled up. Then tie the strings and your hay is ready. I have never made a hay, but now I've known how it is meant. If you have the knowledge, farming is not difficult, so it has helped me so much. Hay can also be made with a baler like this one, especially if you have a bigger piece of land. Once ready, store your hay in a shed so it doesn't get wet or get too much sun. Also make sure that it's off the ground away from rats and rodents. This way you are assured of healthy feeds for your cows throughout the year. Remember farmers, apart from hay, cows need a balanced diet that has protein, minerals and clean water. But what else do you need to do to make sure your animals stay healthy? Let's join Kozi and Kachenana in Zambia. Who are they visiting today? Today we're in Chibombo in Central Province and we're visiting Morten Himagamba. Morten's farm covers 34 hectares. It has cows for beef production. Ah. Beef is a staple for many a Zambian, and there's a readily available appetite for this product. But how easy is it to get it from the farm to your plate? To help Morten get a better understanding is Mutinta Molokota from AgriServe. What would I need to be able to start being a cattle farmer? First of all, you need a big enough area to support and where you can rear your animals. Right. What are the most common challenges that I might find? Geographical challenges. Depending right. on the area that you are in, there are some diseases that are prevalent in that area. So yeah. that's one challenge. So Mr. Morton, what are some of the diseases that you've been experiencing in your animals? Foot and mouth disease, uh -huh. okay. anaplasmosis. Those in our area here are some of the major diseases that we used to, to be affected with. What might we be looking to do to prevent some of these diseases and pests from affecting our animals? So like the anaplasmosis and the foot and mouth disease he's mentioned, mm -hmm. the best way to help prevent that disease is by tick control, which is either dipping or spraying your animals regularly right. with, um, with acaricides. We spray, okay. but the, the issue is on the, the type of ticks. Right. So as a result, you find that sometimes you can spray the animals but ticks are still on the what? 
on the animals? So most of the dips on the market would cover uh, most ticks. So it's important when you notice that the ticks are not falling off or dying, you change your dip to a different um, chemical. Okay. Yes, the okay. active ingredient in the dip is right. what matters, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So resistance can be a challenge. Yeah. Overusing the same spray chemicals would definitely make the ticks resistant. Exactly. So we need to have an understanding of when to change based on the results we're getting mm -hmm. from the sprays yeah. and the dips. Ah, absolutely fantastic. More tips please. So apart from controlling the external parasites, mm -hmm. there's uh, controlling of internal parasites. Right. So these are worms. So we advise that you deworm your animals at least every three months. Matinta, mm -hmm. I'm sure that you can agree with me that Mr. Himarampa is keeping a very, very good uh, herd of cattle here. Yes. For this season, they look extremely healthy. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things you can commend him for? And if there are any gaps that he might need to fill with the maintenance and management of his cattle, please do share some knowledge. On the few things I would advise that he works on is uh, the water troughs. Right. Uh, by placing more water troughs so that the animals all have enough uh, space to drink at the same time, that right. they don't have to compete or wait for each other to drink water. Good. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, the better you manage your cattle, the more you reduce the risk of loss. Also, you manage your cattle well, it means it's healthier and you get a better profit at market. Very well said, Cozy. Good spacing, enough clean food and water, and a clean environment is important. If we want our animals healthy and high producing. But this is not just for cows, but for other animals in the farm. Let's learn more after the break. Welcome back to Shamba Shepa. Today we are all about healthy animal farming. We have seen how to keep your cows healthy and productive. In this part, we shall learn how to keep your other animals in the farm healthy and happy too. But first, let's see what to expect in the weather for the coming week. Welcome to the Shamba Shepa weather and farming news for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect lower rainfall across Kenya. The north, upper and lower eastern counties will see very low rainfall of less than 5 mm across the week. This covers Marsabit, Isiolo, Mandera, Wajia, Kitui, Makueni and Kajado. Meru, Daraka and lower parts of Garissa will see rainfall reaching a total of 15 mm across the week. The coastal counties will get low amounts of rainfall reaching 15 mm in the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Kwale. Most parts of Tana River and Taita Taveta will see very low rains below 5 mm. Central Kenya will as well get low rainfall reaching 15 mm across the week. This covers the counties of Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Kerenyaga, and Moranga. Embu as well as Nairobi and Kiambu will have lower rains below 5 mm. Lekipia expects up to 50 mm of total rainfall. The north, central and south rift valley will get moderate amounts of rainfall of up to 50 mm across the week. This spans across Trukana, West Pokot, Marakwet, Baringo and Samburu. Transoia, Wasingishu, Nandi, Kericho, Nakuru to Narok will have rainfall of up to 25 mm. The western and Nyanza regions will have low rainfall of less than 15 mm in the week. This covers Bungoma, Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga, Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Nyamira, and Kisi. Farmer, scout your farm for fungal diseases like blight that comes with the cold weather and control them with recommended fungicides as soon as you spot them. This is common in horticultural crops like tomatoes, beans, potatoes, and cash crops like coffee. For a detailed weather forecast for your area and more tips, get in touch with iShamba. Call 0711-082-606. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. Kina mama na kina dada. Hoye! Hoye! It's our time. The Shamba Shape Up team has got our back. And have you had time to listen to the Shamba Shape Up podcast? It is time to join other women who are making money from farming. Yes, and how better than to join our team of experts. And you can listen to them 
anywhere at any time, whether you're in the garden, shamba, or even the chama. Join us as we talk about issues of women in farming. And you can find us on most podcast platforms. To get the podcast, get a smartphone with good internet, of course, mm -hmm. and head out to shambashepapodcast.com. Our next Shape Up take us to Uganda to meet with Aggie and Frop. Sir, welcome to Shape Shape Up Uganda. Today we are meeting our farmer and his son at a very special place. Mr. Francis and Innocent. Yes. Hello. 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 Welcome, please. Hello, come, please. Thank you. Thank you. This is the first brick house, Uganda. You mean in Masaka, in Masaka. right? Uganda. What? 1892. <laughs> we are in Kakunyu village in Masaka. And we're visiting Francis Semakula and his son, Innocent. Francis loves his chicken. And he had 200 until a disease called Gumboro wiped them out. He has remained with only 50 layers, but he intends to get more. So, we brought in our expert, Michael Omol from CKL Africa, to advise him on hygiene in chicken houses, especially after such a devastating outbreak. Whoa. So, you, you don't have a disinfectant here, yeah? This is where the birds stay? Yes. Okay. Do you feel the smell that is just coming out? I do feel it, eh. yes. Are you comfortable with the birds here? No, I'm not comfortable. Eh. Yes. Uh, even for me, I'm not feeling comfortable yeah. because at least we need some bit proper ventilation with the birds. Yes. But I see they're a good number. How many are they here? Uh, around 50. 50, yeah. I think they are well spread, which is okay. But then my main problem is, there is no air enough in here. It is. I don't know what you have thought of doing. So I've already thought of removing them uh -huh. to the next room. Yeah, okay, let's see the room. I mean, it's best it, if we get to see the room. It is here. Yeah? Next. Okay. okay. So this is the new house? This is the new house. Okay. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Wow, good. You can feel it. This is much better, Ooh, yeah? Much better. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's cleaner. It's okay. So the house is looking very good, but uh -huh. first things first, we entered, there was no disinfectant at the door. Yeah. So the best thing for me, first thing, we start with the foot bath at the door. So we go back. I mean, let's just start from there, <laughs> yeah? Okay. So as I said, uh, uh, we're going to have a foot bath here. So yes. we can make it very simple. Just get a small basin and then you cut it into half. Having this point is going yes. to act as our foot bath for today, yeah? Yes. So we're going to put a disinfectant. Today we recommend Cooperside yes. as a disinfectant here. So <laughs> first, most important to always have your protective clothing because the chemical can corrode your uh, skin. It's harmful. And then uh, we're going to measure 100 ml of this Cooperside in 10 liters of water, okay? Yes. Yeah. So always to ensure that whenever you're coming in, inside the poultry house, you just have your feet fully disinfected mm, properly. Okay. It, the sponge is helping you to avoid too much of waste. So you do okay. that as you enter inside the poultry house, okay? And whenever you're coming out, you, sh you should also do the same thing. How often can we change this solution? Ideally, it should stay for two weeks before you change. Two weeks. Mm, okay. But now it will depend upon how dirty it gets. You can choose to do it every week, ah. but it is best working for 14 days. The second part we're going to have is, we're going to disinfect the house. Yes. As uh, Mze had mentioned, mm. we had an issue with the birds, yes. and now we want to ensure that the disease is fully eradicated. Yeah? Okay. Okay. So yes, you clean, and now we want to bring in new litter, we yes. want to bring in new uh, cages for the birds to lay eggs. Oh. We need to disinfect all the places. Okay. And we are going to use still the same concentration of this cooper side in uh, the pump. We spray the house together with the litter to ensure better efficacy and to ensure that the diseases are well controlled in the poultry house. 
The most important thing is you need to know how many birds are going to fit in this particular house. Uh -huh. So for the birds in layers in a deep litter, yes. we recommend you have six to seven birds per square meter. Since we have done the housing, you know now you don't need to stock as many birds in an yes. area because they tend to be together overcrowded. Mm -hmm. Then you have cases of cannibalism. They start hey. eating on each other, mm -hmm. which is not a good aspect. You get competition for food, of competition course. for light, uh -huh. and even competition for water. Then you have birds which are not doing well, others which are doing very Survival. well. Survival. The other aspect of the house that you need to consider mm -hmm. is the ventilation. When there is too much ammonia, then the birds suffer from a lot of respiratory diseases. And then that will call for a farmer again to incur more cost in going to buy medicine to treat the birds. So we need to know our 50 birds can fit in here very well. Okay. We can increase them to uh, another 50 birds to fit in this very house that we have. Now that we've disinfected the new house and we have a foot bath, it's time to bring in the chicken. Thank you, thank you, Fro Benagi. Good hygiene and proper spacing for your chicken is very important for their growth and comfort. It is also important to follow vaccination schedule so you can protect your birds from diseases such as Merex, Newcastle, infectious bronchitis, and Gumboro. Another animal rearing venture that farmers have embraced is pig farming. They too need good care if you want to earn some good money from them. To learn more on this, let's come back to Kenya and go to Embu County to meet a pig farmer, Charles. We are going to find out about the benefits of pig farming. They can be a very profitable business if done right. So, let us see what Ignatius thinks. Ignatius, yes. this is our farmer Charles. Yes. Now Charles, how long have you been keeping pigs? Mm, approximately eight months. Eight months? Yeah. You're very new at this. Of course. Why did you decide on pigs? I like how they respond to feeds. They take short time to get to the market mm -hmm. and that's it. Is it profitable to keep pigs? Yes, it's very much profitable. Which brings me to the pigsty here. Yeah. By your observation, do you think it matches the standards you, uh, you want? I can see you did a very good job Thank by you. locating the pigsty far from your houses so that there's no so much disturbance coming to the pigs. Okay. You also did very well by raising the floor up from the ground until where it is yeah. so that when this drainage of water does not get into into the, the pigsty. pigsty. Okay. You also did so well to ensure that you build the floor and you've kept an area where there's a feed trough and a water trough and a resting area. You've also built the walls and left some space so that fresh air can mm. get inside. Ignatius, where should Charles improve on? It's first by extending the roof so that it can ensure because rain comes with a lot of wind, that rainwater does not get into the pigsty. The sun also has a very direct stress into the pigs that are staying here. You heard what Charles said, he feeds his pigs on. What would you advise him on that? I've brought in some feeds. I come, I show you how you should go about the feeding. Good. Buying good quality feed for your pigs is an investment that more than pays off when you come to sell as they grow much faster. So, what's the first stage? This one is called pig repellets. Yes. It is given to piglets from seven days up to eight weeks. Increase the quantities slowly until they can be able to consume one a kilo. And uh, the benefit of using pig repellents is it prepares the stomach so that it can be able to digest the solid food after winning so that they can be able to gain good weights. When the piglets are that young, yeah. how much water should you give them per day? You should ensure that there is water at all times so that any time the piglet wants to take water, it has free access to water. Once eight weeks are over, you introduce gradually the piglets to saw and winner. 
it ensures that the pig will get weight faster and also have a good quality meal. By good quality meat, we refer to as meat which is lean, especially for nyamachomas. So of what ratio do you mix the, the feed with yeah. water? One kilogram of the feed, you also use one liter of water. And for how long? The sow and winner meal should be fed to pigs until they achieve 60 kilograms. Uh, you have to have the weighing band so that you can keep weighing your pig. Once the pig has attained 60 kilograms, you transition gradually to pig finisher meal. What is the difference between this and this? The sow and winner meal helps the internal organs to develop and be able to grow. And this one finishes off the pig by ensuring that it grows big so that you can be able to sell the pig when it's ready for market. For the pig finisher, we recommend you give it as a wet meal. 2.5 kilograms per day of pig finishing. Mix with? When you take one kilogram of pig finishing meal, you mix with one liter of water. This one we recommend by six months that your pig will have achieved a weight of more than 70 kilos. To recap, pigs go through three different feeds from day seven until they are ready to sell at about four and a half months. Start by giving your piglets half a kilo of creep pellets a day seven. And increase gradually so that by eight weeks old, they are eating one kilogram a day. From eight weeks old, give one kilogram of saw and winner meal. Increase gradually so that by four months, piglets are eating two kilograms of saw and winner meal. They should weigh about 60 kilograms at four months. From this point on, give 2.5 kilogram of finisher meal per pig per day. Your pig should be ready to sell at 70 kilograms. That's at around four and a half months of age. When changing the feeds, always mix a little bit of the initial feed with a new feed so that the pigs are not stressed. <laughs> Tirani, are you dying in there? I, I am going to sell all these cows, all of them. Come on, what do you Almost the whole day there, they give me two liters. They just eat. And look at that one looking at me. But what are you feeding them? Look at what you're feeding them. Grass only. You know you need to feed your cows properly. Oh, huh? no, no, this is not a hotel. Tirani, they have to learn how to eat the grass they are given. They cannot feed on grass only. And now look at this. What? This means your cows have worms. Oi. How do you expect cows to produce when they, they, they have worms? Now, now what, what am I supposed to do now if I... I told you about Aishamba. Ah, yeah, the Mameba. Yes, call them. Call Aishamba on 0711082606 to sign up and ask any questions. So, farmers, good housing, enough feeds, vaccination and good hygiene are the most important guidelines to follow to ensure happy, healthy, and well-producing animals. Join us next week as we visit more farms right here on Shamba Shepherd.